All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and uh, <laughs> Casey is with me, and we have our first non-Buffalo Fanatics repeat guest, which is huge for us Ooh. because just about every guest who has come on who's not from Buffalo Fanatics has said, no, see you later. We're, we're not going <laughs> to come good. back. We can't deal with you. But Damon here, Damon, for some reason, likes us, I think. Um, so, Damon, why, why did you come back on to hang out with us again? <laughs> How dare well, first you? How off, dare you right? come back? <laughs> How dare you like us? Listen, there's nobody better than Nap and Casey. Period. Point blank. Um, um, I'll be back anytime you guys call me. Damn it! So just let me know. Uh, we appreciate. And what are you doing that? tomorrow? <laughs> well, tomorrow, tomorrow. Maybe next yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've I've been looking forward to this. I don't do anything with the scheduling, so I don't know who our next guest is. I don't know anything about anything. Um, Nap does everything on the show. He's on the other side of me. Um, he does everything on the show, and he sent me a list because I was like, "Hey, man, we should probably go back to it just being me and you talking." Because we've had so many guests on the show. I was out for you know paternity leave because something about a kid, and uh, I was like, "Hey, man, we we should get back just me and you, right?" Um, and he was like, well, I've already got guests lined up. And I was like, all right, well, who are they? Right. And he sends me the list and your name was on it. And I was like, here we go. I am all about it. And he was like, is that okay? Like, is that cool? And I was like, no, it's fine. I love guests. We should keep them on there. (laughs) So I've been looking forward to this. You've had a busy, you've had a busy day, a busy week. I should say, man, today sucked, man. Roster cuts, practice squad building. I know the NFL likes it, but I don't like the I don't like it because I'm on Twitter. I'm getting text messages. It sucks. Um, it sucks that players lose their job, and some of them, yeah. you know, that this is it. You know what I mean? I mean, we can sugarcoat it any way you want. There's hub football and spring league that are coming up. You know, they that might be their next spot. But at the end of the day, you know, you got a lot of players that lost their job, and and it sucks, but. You know, there's a lot of shining stars, too. There's guys that are getting opportunities on practice squads. And, you know, I mean, overall, it, it is a busy week. I hate roster cuts. I hate uh, practice squad time um, only because it's I'm constantly updating my website. And it's like, uh, I got you don't write any articles. You're just sitting there constantly doing transactions all day long. But, um, hey, that's what they come for. So you got to give them what they need, right, and what they want. Yeah, I'd assume this is a pretty busy day for – your website just in general, like out of, out of the entire year that I, I know there's definitely got to be like, obviously draft time just in general is busy, but there's got to be certain days that are, everybody's getting extra traffic that day like today, unfortunately. And I, it would be Wednesday when this comes out, but Tuesday, Wednesday, like that's, that's gotta be a heavy traffic day for the website. Yeah, definitely. Anything your, our transactions do extremely well anyway. So when you're constantly putting out transactions, People come to your site. They know where to get the stuff, you know, and, and we're, we're excited to put it out there. You know, that's something that we've been doing that we always would be scouring the web trying to find. But thankfully, now we have the NFL that sends us the list, so it's easier to type it up. Um, but I'm in the long haul. Hey, you know what? It's, it's worth it. It's fun. And it's you got everyone. I mean, if you enjoy it, amen. It works. Yeah, I mean, extremely Uh, exciting day for the fans. Definitely not as much so for the players, but for the fans, this is a like this is a day to look forward to. Where it's what what's our roster actually going to look like? Who's who are those guys that I'm like I've been watching them all off season. I was high on them before the draft. Maybe they were like a a free agent pickup that was an underrated guy. Now you get to see do they make it or not. I know Casey's got a couple guys that fall into that category for him. Yeah, no, today it was it was not your best day. Um, for two days straight, I've been bugging you on Twitter, right? Um, and you haven't responded, which is bravo on you. Cause it's almost like I'm trolling you at this point. Um, but I've been bugging you to do Nick McLeod. Tell me what's going on with Nick McLeod. Tell me what's going on with Nick McLeod. Literally anything that you ha- said about the Buffalo Bills. I think my exact tweet to you was do Nick McLeod now. Right. And then, uh, he ended up just getting scooped up by the Bengals. Right. Was that, was that a shock to you? Did you see that coming? No, I mean, I, I, I mean, it wasn't a shock. I'm not going to say it was a shock. He was the, he's the best damn, he was the best damn undrafted corner that we had. Let's, let's Amen. It yeah. is what it is. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think we were the only two people on the internet that talked about Nick McLeod. So, I mean, bravo to you, Casey. That just shows how amazing of a scout you are. You, um, you see that? You see that little <laughs> yeah. sugar on top? A little sugar, a little sugar on top. Um, Casey, Casey's no, was, ego just gets a little bit larger. But, was, well, let me show you this. You know what? When you think about it, 
the the Bengals are probably one of the smallest scouting. You know, when it comes to scouting in the NFL, like everybody has directors of player personnel and all these different things. The Bengals, they have like they they haven't had a huge scouting department in years. If the Bengals took him, he was a stud. It's got to make you question, like, why did the Bills not do that? Like, why would the Bills not have kept him on the roster if another he, team? He would have. Yeah, I, he would have been on our practice squad for sure. But I can tell you this: the Bills are extremely happy with their corners. Um, I know me personally, and I know you guys may be questioning it too. Um, you probably are going, well, dang, we need another corner. I mean, if we just had one more corner, maybe maybe a veteran corner, can we add? I, I don't think it happens. I think they're content with what they have. They like the teachable guys, guys that can, that they can teach and groom into what they want. If you go back to McDermott's days, they avoid the corner, man. In Carolina, they avoided mm-hmm. it big time. You remember that. I mean, James Bradbury was through the draft. Josh Norman was through the draft. They weren't going out and making these big splashes at corner. They'll they'll because they feel like they can groom them. You got to remember something. McDermott was a D back. Mm-hmm. He he's going to take guys that he sees probably himself in. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I know, he, I know he loves corners. like <laughs> Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson, very similar mold. They drafted both of them, and I mean, they're not very athletic guys, but. <laughs> Every single time you hear the coaches talk about them, you mentioned coachable. That's one of the things that they always say is like, this guy just kind of fits the mold of the player we want. And we can turn him into even more of that because he is just a coachable guy. He listens, he does what we tell him to do and he shows up every day and just works hard. So, I mean, that, that definitely factors into what the bills are doing as much as, I mean, I would love to see the bills have gone out and gotten like a, I don't, I didn't really want to see him go get anybody in free agency, but, I would have loved to see them pick up a corner in the draft, just somebody who's a little bit more athletic, but that's just not what they want to do. They've made that very clear, despite (laughs) saying we want better production at the position. Yeah, I mean, you know what, though, too, is they're hit or miss. They're hit or miss type players, and they're the hardest, some of the hardest position people to to follow. Um, There there was games that Nick McLeod had solid games. There was games where he struggled. There was games – just like, I mean, most corners are going to have games where either you're hit or miss. And mm-hmm. the thing is, when it, when it comes to the cornerback position, it is a very important position when it comes to, um, like, what am I thinking? Like, oh, confidence. Mm-hmm. If you start getting burned four or five times in a game, you can see their confidence level drop on film. And then all of a sudden they get scored on. And then their head's down. And next thing you know, they're getting beat again. And if they keep – until that pass breakup comes to where they get hype again, to where they go, holy cow, I can do it again? Yeah, all right, I'm back. It's one of them positions, just like a kicker. When it's, when your confidence level starts going down, you are you're kind you become worthless. And I hate to say it, but it's true. <clears throat> yeah, I know, I know Casey is – Definitely uh, disappointed about uh, Nick McLeod not making the roster. Do you want to, Casey? Do you want to talk about that at all a little bit before we move on? Because I do I, have another thing that you can actually get excited about in a second. Uh, there's not a lot that I get excited about. There anymore. is. Though. Although, did y'all did y'all know that? And I'm going to talk. I, I'm going to talk about Nick McLeod. Um, but did y'all know that you can just walk into Wendy's and be like, "Hey, I want four, you know." cheeseburgers stacked on top of each other give me a like a quadruple burger real quick and they'll be like oh, okay and they'll just do it that's absolutely wild anyways I had, really a, I had a triple <laughs> yeah i had a i had a triple bur- bourbon burger today um for Ooh. lunch so they just put they put uh, three patties right that's absolutely ridiculous um but no i thought i when i heard cam lewis was released my first thought was oh, okay well nick mcleod's gonna slide into that spot right um i thought I thought McLeod Cloud outplayed um, Cam in the preseason, right? So I just I figured that's what was going to happen. Um, was upset that he got claimed. Was upset that he was one of the twenty seven players that got claimed. Um, so yeah, it, it is what it is. But oh well. It, with that being such a small number, though, it does go to show that like all of that worry leading up to whenever, like when everybody got released, everybody was all worried about like, Oh, if we release this guy, he's not going to make it to the practice squad. He's not going to make it. Like everybody said that about almost every even semi-talented player on the roster. And yeah. 
only one of them gets claimed, and of course, it's the guy that you were like, championing. It to be the, the guy most. that I like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, but well, you, hey, I wish this was live right now. I would break some news for you guys, but it's not live. So, oh. but but Dean Marlowe is not resigning with the Bills. He's resigning with the Lions tomorrow. Oh, they're bringing him back. All right, well, look at that. Figure that was bring today, back. On Friday or Saturday, whatever. We just broke news to you in uh, the past. So you're welcome. In the past. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm sorry, man. It, a phone call came through and it like kicked me off. I don't even know what the hell just happened right there. But it, I don't know. I don't know who this is. But I mean, you're. I mean, you're getting the browser calling me, man. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, nah, definitely. Uh, Marlo's going to be resigning with the uh, Lions tomorrow. I know a lot of fans have been asking me that, so um, that's per my sources. Per your sources, yeah. Just when when that news officially breaks, just know that uh, Nap Nose Buffalo had it first. Per oh, we do it. Draft Diamond it per Damon Talbot. Per yeah. per eight yeah. twenty eight twenty five on Wednesday, September first, when we recorded this. Mm-hmm. Yep, Haters. we had it first. So Casey, yeah, Nap, Nap broke that. Yeah, no. We're, we're, look, I'm not going to take credit for that. I would love to, no, but I'm guys, not going to. <laughs> Go so, Casey, yeah, get on, get you, on the uh, Twitter. Get on the Twitter and break it on Twitter. I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to go on. Do it. I'm not. A, I'm not a news do breaker. It. Do it, yeah. bro. All right. Well, then, while I'm doing yeah. that, Casey, just, go ahead and say gloat. It. Go ahead and gloat about you being right because when the draft happened, I said that Rashad Wild Goose would make the roster and that Stevenson would not. Yeah. You said so, the opposite. Go ahead. I will give you your chance to gloat right now. Yeah. So we came out and Rashad Wild Goose, it, like the only reason why. Him and Mog Dress, I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. Um, what was his name was Wild Goose, right? Uh, and when it came on here, it was me, you, and Manny, and we sat right here in the same little web screen. And you sat there and you came at me, Manny came at me, said, Oh, there he's making he's doing this. He's got blah, blah, blah. I was like, No, if anything, he's gonna get waved, right? And they're gonna want to put him on the practice squad, somebody's gonna pick him up. Um, now, unbeknownst to me, which is a big word for me, um, I was actually talking about Nick McLeod um, getting waved <laughs> and getting picked up by somebody. Um, <clears throat> but no, I'm uh, Kendall has been one of the guys that have said multiple times. I like what Wild Goose has said, or w- what he's done on special teams. I wish he would get better in um, you know the back end, his actual job, right? Which is defending the pass. So um, I don't know. You, you kind of hope that he does. He does. He gets a little bit better, but. My thoughts on him are very low, and that sounds bad, but it's more like I see more talented folks out there that could take his spot. I'm not a big Wild Goose guy, and I don't care if he has a cool name. It's the same with Jake Kumaro. I don't care if he has a, 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 a nickname. I don't care, right? I don't care. I want to know what the player can do itself, and I'm not high on Wild Goose at all. Now, You're next preseason when he comes out, and he, no, I'm not. He's he's like I'm the not. anti I'm not. Kumaro fan. I'm he, not high he cannot on Kumaro. stand Jake Kumaro. <laughs> before we before we get into that, just want to confirm that this is okay. I have per sources and then in parentheses, NFL draft diamonds tagged you. Dean Marlowe will be re signing with the Detroit Lions. <laughs> I gotta give credit. So are we good with that? It, it, go for it, bro. All right, cool. We're doing it. <laughs> Did you put NFL draft diamonds or just bad draft it's, diamonds? It's NFL draft diamonds. No, it's oh, sorry, draft no draft diamonds, diamonds yeah. Yeah, yeah, at draft diamonds. There we go. Yeah. Yep. All right. Break the news. Break the news. All right. So, no, I'm, I'm not, not I think, he, I think he fits. I think he fits a little bit more in that mold of like a player that they could just mold into what they want because he's not the like uh, he. I mean, he didn't really have the best preseason just in general. He has a lot of raw abilities, but. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see what he does on the practice squad. But yeah, Jake Kumaro, he's Casey's not a big fan. He was hoping, not that Casey would ever hope that somebody doesn't have a job, but Casey was definitely hoping that Kumaro would not be on the roster so that he could just like rub it in everybody's face. Who did you want to keep though? <laughs> um, Stevenson. Right. <laughs> if it if it came down if it came down to the Bills only keeping six wide receivers, uh, Stevenson was my guy. Right, where uh, Stevenson, Stevenson went to IR today, correct? Correct. I believe, yeah, yeah I think IR. they put him to IR. Yeah. So that means they have how many ro- how many wideouts do we have on a roster? Six now. It's yeah, six, six roster. Yeah. Yep. Six. Hodgins or Hud- yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah is going to be on a practice squad. Mm-hmm. Tanner Gentry on yep. a practice squad, and that's it, right? I believe so. Yeah. 
man, we could use some yeah. wideouts. John Brown, where you at? Um, I, he's, he's available <laughs> as of right now. He is. I don't know what's going to happen, but that would have been a dope. That'd be dope just to add him. I, but um, I believe I they're going to wave Kumaro. I, I believe they're going to wave Kumaro when um, Stevenson comes back from IR. I mean, they've got him in the roster um, spot. No, listen, I mean, it's bro, fine. Kumaro, I can be crazy they love, when it happens. Calendar. Listen, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> let me let me tell you something about Jake Kumaro. Right when okay. watching him in college. That dude was like, I don't even, I can't even explain to you how amazing of a football player that kid was. He, they would throw the ball up and he was mossing people all game. He was absolutely insane. And I get it. Yeah, it's D3. Duh. Okay. I don't, he's doing it in the league. Do you, do you have you any? Say. So, Casey, I know Casey's biggest thing is like he didn't have any, like he didn't perform at all when. He was in Green Bay. He didn't play in Green Bay or anything like that. So, but but he was the one player that the quarterback complained about. Yeah, he, I mean, Aaron Rodgers loved him, and Casey also hates with that being a reasoning that Kumaro is liked by Bills Mafia. <laughs> but like, wh- why would he not have gotten more playing time if, if he is that good? And that's a genuine question because, from all reports, he is playing incredible in camp. But then you look back and. Previously, he hadn't really gotten that playing time. He's been on and off the Bills roster even. So, like, what what would that reasoning be? Well, he's not the fastest he's not guy. Good. He's not. Yeah, well, here's the thing, going. too. Another thing. Okay, here's another thing. Remember this. On a football team, the back-end roster guys, they better be able to do something for you on special teams. Does he play special teams? Yeah. As far as I know, they like him on special teams right now, but yeah. we're doing that, what? that might just be the reports. So I maybe, don't know. Maybe a gunner. Maybe he's a gunner. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's running down. Field. I haven't, listen, I haven't paid close enough attention to say I've watched every preseason game and he played 13 snaps on special teams. I don't know. But if he's playing 13 snaps on special teams, that, then, 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 okay, I'm okay with that. But back end roster guys, guys like Rashard Higgins, right? Who's on the Browns right now, mm-hmm. he would have had 100 takers. You okay, he would have every, all thirty-two teams would have been interested in him if he had special teams ability. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're a five wide receiver, a five six wide receiver, you better be able to bring more than just sitting on the bench and holding a clipboard. You better be able to play a, a, a team somewhere, whether it be blocking, punt block. I don't give a crap. You better be able to do something because that's exactly what the Bills do. If you go and you look at the roster, they traded Daryl Johnson because he had special teams value. Carolina became aware that he was available, and they probably said, dang, right now we could use another special teams guy and we could use a DN. This allows us to cut a DN or a special teams guy only and give us one of each spot. So to them, it's like it'd be like a kicker that can punt. Mm -hmm. You're saving a roster spot by doing so, so it makes you more valuable in this league. So at that point, if Kumaro is playing special teams, amen. If he's just the number six or number five, I have a problem with that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I completely agree with that. But that's probably why he's not seeing more increased reps, too, because maybe he's limited as what he can do as five or X or whatever they're going to play him at. Does that make sense or no? No, I mean, Casey, that makes sense. Hate, sense. Casey's, yeah. Casey's not going to – he doesn't want to hear that crap <laughs> he anyway. Doesn't. To well, him, no, 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 no. I, I get it. I get it, and, and that's fine. And that's that's the reason why he's on the team is because his special teams value. It has absolutely nothing to do with how big of a receiver he is. I cannot get that through people's heads, and that's what makes me mad. In fact, I've seen so many tweets today <laughs> talking about Jake Kumro is going to be a tight end in the end zone. Oh, Jake Kumro, yeah, they're going to use was... him as a tight end in the red zone. Like I am, no, they're not. Absolutely not. Like he's not going to be used as tight end. The only reason why he's on the roster is because of special teams. And when Marquez Stevenson is brought back off of IR, guess whose value is that um, special teams and which is a returner? They're probably going to get rid of the other special teams guy in the wide receiver room. So Kumro is probably going to get waived at that point. Now we do have an open practice squad. <laughs> Kumro will probably go to the practice squad then, and then everybody can calm down about Jake Kumro being a tight end for the Buffalo. You hate Bills. you legitimately hate Jake Kumro. I think I think you. What did he ever do to I you? I don't. Dude? It's I don't. Like I just Kumaro hate did, hearing. What did he? It do was to the you? same with Duke Williams. It was the same with Duke Williams. You know how everybody was but, like, but Duke, Duke needs to be a tight hold end. On, hold on, but Duke was Duke's. What value did he have besides wide he, receiver? He, He's a big body. He didn't do really – and he's not exactly. in the league right now. 
But he'll be in the yep. CFL next week. You know what I'm saying? He'll probably end up being back in the CFL, and he'll probably end up get balling out. Yeah, it's it's just it's two different it's two different leagues. The NFL looks for versatility, and you know what, Marquis Stevenson, he's an animal, but I'm sorry, he's no he's no Jake a wide receiver. <laughs> he absolutely not even close. Trash. Like Trash. they're not even they're not even on the same. Level. When I agree. It comes to I play. agree. But you just you just ranted about Jake Kumro being a special teamer, and that's why he's on the roster, no, no, right? No, no, no I didn't. Now no, you're no, comparing him as a wide receiver. No, but Casey. That is Casey, why they're bringing Steve on there. He said Hold he on. might not have been getting value. playing time in Green I Bay said, because I don't, of that. I'm saying his PT time over that's over in Green Bay. They're now having to utilize him in this special teams game. But I'll bet you if you go back and look, he wasn't being utilized. He was only that in that era. And he played gotcha. before that. I, I want to say he was with Cincinnati before that. I want to say he was in Cincinnati Maybe before I'll he looked at Green Bay. Yeah, uh, look that up. I think he yeah. started off in Cincinnati. Cincinnati's an undrafted free agent, and he made their initial fifty-three. If I'm not mistaken, let me let, let's see if I'm worth anything here. Well, well, my my whole thought process is, is he's a wide receiver number six for our team. Right now, they might keep seven wide receivers when you know Stevenson comes back. They might wave somebody else in a different position group. But if I was a betting man, if you're going to swap one special team player out, why don't you put the other special team player that you're bringing in from IR? Which one has better value, the returner or you know a, a gunner or whatever the hell else he does on special teams? Which one Spot has on, better, Damon. more value? Spot so on. Wait, Undrafted right, free man. agent signed by the Bengals. Boom! NFL draft diamonds. <laughs> <Respectful>. <laughs> But uh, that's what I'm glad I got something right today. Um, <laughs> here's, here's the thing, too. I will say this. Um, when you're looking at the Bills roster overall, are you excited? Like, does it – are you fired up? Do you, do you guys think that they're like, we're ready right now? You think we're 100% ready? You think there's any need? I'm over here directing the show, map. Move out the way. No, Listen, you're good. I like the do question. Do you think – yeah, because I want to know. Do you think right now, if we look at our roster for Buffalo, are you content – Across the board, what what position area are worries you the most? So I think what worries me the most right now, I mean, cornerback too, just in general, that'll always be the case as long as they're not, as long as they just keep getting that same type of guy in. But that's kind of like I don't expect that to really change. That's just like a hope. the The offensive line depth is probably what worries me the most because if <laughs> one of the tackles goes down, we we got some issues because. Yes, Spencer Brown is there. Yes, like he he could be a really good swing tackle this year, but we don't really know. Like we still have to we hope we don't have to find out. But I would much rather see somebody who is a veteran who's been in that position before while we're in a Super Bowl run be that swing tackle because if Deion Dawkins goes down, nothing against Spencer Brown, but I don't want to see him protecting Josh Allen's blindside. Not this year. I I don't want to see that right now. So that's probably the area that I'm most concerned. The starters in general, I am happy with. I, I think the what the defensive line, if they play up to their potential or close to it, they're going to be so much better than last year. So I'm not like worried about that. I think having star back is big for Ed Oliver. It's big for the run game. Not big for the stat sheet, obviously. He's not a stat stuffer. We know that. But having him back for the defense is huge. So I think the defense is going to be better. I think the offense, you're returning all of those guys – I'm I'm excited for what this team is going to be able to do. I I'm just a little bit nervous about the offensive line depth and then can they actually improve their run blocking? Like that's my biggest concern because if they can't then situ- that situational running that you want to be able to see the Bills succeed at, they're going to struggle at again. So they have to be able to do that better, but everything else if like they have the experience of being to the AFC Championship game. They have the experience of playing in those big moments now. Now take like take what you learned and go do something with it because they have the right guys in place. I think. Okay, how about you, Casey? Uh, I'm actually inverted from from Kyle. Like I'm I'm fine with the tackle situation. Um, it's the interior that that actually messes with me a little bit. I would have liked to see um, Lamp actually you know do something as far as you know present a challenge to Feliciano, like push him a little bit. I would have liked to see that competition a lot better, but unfortunately Lamp was just a dud 
in Buffalo, the way he was a dud in, 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 you know, LA or, or San Diego or whatever, wherever he was drafted at, whatever place. But um, no, it's the interior line that I, I really want to see upgraded at this point. Feliciano, this is going to make a lot of people mad too. I, I don't think he is a starter in this league right now, but a, you can upgrade that position very easily. So, and I've said that for a while. Um, and that's what I would have liked I don't to think see. That, but I don't think saying you can upgrade him is that bad because it's very like obviously yeah. you can upgrade him. Saying that he, based on the Bills' current roster, saying he shouldn't be a starter, or saying no, something what like saying. what Ryan <laughs> said this offseason, saying that he shouldn't even be on the team, that's different. <laughs> but saying he's upgradable, I think I don't think there's anybody yeah. who would have a problem with that because he's probably not a. I, I, I don't know the guard situation around the league, but like he's not a top 15, 20 guard in the NFL right now. So he's <laughs> no, upgraded. Right. See, and you guys are talking about positions that I, I think, I don't think they're that bad. I'm, I'm worried about our damn tight ends. See, no, okay. So be. I got it. I got into the, I got you into this no? with somebody. I got no, into this with no. somebody today. <laughs> and I'm here's not, my thing. Let me just break it down. Right. Dawson Knox. It's okay. amazing. You shut your mouth. Okay, <laughs> listen. I'm not knocking him. I'm not I'm not knocking not him. Not knocking him. He's he's decent at a tight end's position. He makes oh, some sir. plays that are like he makes some plays that go, holy that's my tight end. You and he bull rushes somebody, but mm-hmm. he also drops wide open passes. He he he's not a big target. I mean, in the red zone. You may have to re- go to somebody that's bigger than him if you're trying to. He's he's, he's, the, say he's the same on, size as saying, other guys. I'm not yeah. saying Kumaro. Relax, me, All right, <laughs> but I will say that's probably why they have a bigger guy on the roster in the red zone. And you can sit there and say, "Oh no, no, no." Most corners in this league are five ten to six one. In that time, in that range, a six-three wide receiver or a six-three tight end or a six-six tight end, which we haven't seen in forever. Okay, what, Kenny Kenny Ubo was on the waiver wire, didn't get claimed. Old Miss tight end. Now I'm not saying I'm not saying. Look, I'm not saying we should have put in a claim for him. I don't even know how big Kenny Ubo is, but he's a freaking athlete. Okay, Jets end up resigning him to the practice squad. Sean Bayer from Denver gets cut from Iowa. Hell of a player. Goes, ends up going back on the practice squad. No one claims these guys. So, to me, it's just like the Bills obviously are set. Are you guys really that sure on Tommy Sweeney? So, I, for me, it's not about Tommy Sweeney or even what Reggie Gilliam could potentially do as that, like, flex. Reggie Gilliam's fullback. a fullback, bro. Yes. He's a no, fullback. No, no, no. no. I, We're using him as a fullback. Yes, completely. But he is also going to fill that like third tight end spot for them, where like it if need be. But he is their fullback. But for so for me, the tight end position, I like I was saying before, I got into somebody, or I got into it with somebody on Twitter earlier today about this. I don't love what the Bills have at tight end, but I the way I look at it is the Bills don't run a tight end centric offense like the Chiefs focus on their tight end more. The 49ers focus on their tight end. The Raiders focus on their tight end because they have an absolute superstar there. The Bills have superstar wide receivers. So the way I look at it is they don't really care about having that superstar tight end. They Obviously, we want Dawson Knox to play better than he has. No doubt about it. He has to play better than he has. But I'm not as worried about the tight end position because the Bills have two slot receivers who can play that middle of the field. They have two outside wide receivers who can be like, they can make themselves a bigger target than they actually are because of their ability to get up. And also just their ability to catch the ball with Gabe Davis and with Stefan Diggs. We know that they have the ability to do that. So I'm not as worried about that. I'm not saying it's a strength of the team by any means. Like nobody should argue that it's a strength of the team, but I'm not necessarily worried about it just because of the way the bills play offense. And also you were talking about, size of the tight end while you were talking i looked this up dawson knox 6'4 250 pounds travis kelsey 6'5 260 pounds george kittle 6'4 250 pounds he's not, not saying he's four. not saying not he's, saying, he's, no not saying he's on their level by any means but if you're talking we need size, to pull that up there's no way in hell he's 6'4 
He's not he six is, four. No he way. is listed. He is listed at six four. And to make it even better, pull, he's the, he's pull him up on Ole Miss website. He's the tallest. Pull him up on the. He was young, man. He was grown. I'm not digging through Ole Miss. Kyle, you do that. I'll see if I can, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of time into that. Oh, come on. That's a lot of digging. That's a lot of digging. Yeah. All you do is type in Dawson Knox. Everything I've seen is 6'4". Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, there's a lot of football players that I scout on the website. It says 6'4", and then when you get to scout them, they're 6'1", and and 8, and 8 tenths, okay? That's 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 some basketball height changes right there. (laughs) But they do it all the time, I promise you, (laughs) especially in small schools, not at Ole Miss. But but here's the thing. Here, I, I, I would love to see Dawson Knox perform, okay? Not... Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking that away. And I hope he d- turns into this amazing tight end. We don't utilize the tight end. And by utilizing a tight you end, you end up creating mismatches. And mismatches that you can create are what the Chiefs get. You end up having a linebacker covering your tight end that you cannot cover. You have to bring a safety over top because of it. So if you have a guy that is like a Kelsey or like a Darren Waller or one of them type of players – on your roster, and you had five amazing wide receivers too, now you're talking there's nobody going to be able to stop you if you're going to be a passing team. Our running game is suspect at at the least. If Dawson Knox is going to be a blocker, then he needs to improve his blocking. If Reggie Gilliam is your best blocker at tight end, then what is Dawson Knox doing for you if he's dropping passes? He better be able to catch the ball. So it's like I I just – I get it. He's a system guy. He's a fit for whatever they see. I'm not knocking him. I think he's great. And trust me, I'm with you when he stiff arms somebody into the ground. I'm just as fired up as you. But I'm also pissed off when that drop comes that he should have had in the flat or that drop that comes. You know what I mean? He does make some – he's made some hella plays, though, that I can't even get mad. He's made some plays where I'm like – the he comes back. He ends up making him. it back for it. Yeah, so the thing that's weird with Dawson Knox is, like, I was looking at his stats, and he only had four drops last year, but you remember those four drops. And exactly. I think that's, that's They're, like, the critical problem. points. Yeah, yeah. It's he not makes, like, they... like, these crazy plays sometimes, but then he turns around, and in a critical moment, he'll drop a ball that's easy. And I, that's that's where I, like, he needs to get better with that. He doesn't, I, I don't, he doesn't have to be the focal point of the offense for the Bills. He just has to be somebody who is serviceable enough that like the defense has to care that he's there. And I think for him this year, it's a make or break year. Tight end, everybody says it like this is not anything of me being like a smart person or anything. Tight ends is just a slower developing position. So if he can put it together a little bit more this year, then he's on the right track. If he can't, that's when I really start to have worries. If the Bills wanted to go out and get a tight end who can also play, like I, I don't have a problem with that. I just don't know who that guy is because everybody always says, and like this is not anything of like taking a shot at you, but like you also said it when you were talking. You said if they have that Travis Kelsey, that Darren Waller, that George Kittle, there's only four or five guys like that in the entire NFL. Most guys that you're you, gonna get are gonna get be those one like, like that. bottom, but like you, you can't though. That's why there's only like five of them. That's the way. And I'm you, yeah. If, I don't know, like. I don't. I don't if think it's easy. Give just <laughs> I'll give you an example. You're saying you're okay. saying we can't have one. You're I'm saying, saying we, can't, we have can't have one this year. We can we can offer up a draft pick right now and get one. And he's well, sitting well, in Philly with blonde pay. hair. Oh no! He's no, sitting in no, Philly with blonde no, hair. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> we thought oh, this was going to be civil. <laughs> Is he better yeah. than Dawson Knox? Probably. No. Probably, but is he is he worth the money? So it's not just yeah. talent, though. Is he worth like is he worth the money you're going to have to pay him for the return you're going to get from him? That's where if I think get, it comes down to more than get, just that. Man, look, bro. I mean, you have to pay attention to that guy in the middle of the field. I want what a better tight end. I do. We never even made his name. We never even said his name, but people know. That's how good he is. No, that's because everybody. Well, he's one of those. Oh, come on. He's, no, he's, he's not. He's one of those five. He, he, he used to be, but he hasn't here he's, lately. Now, that's, that's also not him. saying that he can't. Casey. I was about to say he can question. get back to it. I, I know. Who, quarterback who, situation. Who the hell is his quarterback? You give him Josh Allen, bro. 
Wow. He would Kirsten he would be better it. with Josh Allen. He would definitely be better yeah. with Josh Allen. Yeah. Like, I, Imagine that chemistry. I am not Look, against doing that. I just I it worries me if the Bills have to cover all, his entire cost. If they can get him midseason, I don't have a problem with that. I want a midseason trade somewhere. That's a worthy midseason trade. But not for what the Eagles wanted at like this entire offseason. They've been asking way too much. There's a reason why he hasn't been traded. If they can start to be reasonable, then we could talk. Well, I mean, we I just like bringing his name up because, I mean, dude, we ain't even talked about Jacob Hollister. No, we haven't. Uh, yeah, let's – all right, let's do that. So <laughs> how shocked were you? Were you shocked? What Like what was going through your mind when you found out uh, that Jacob Hollister wasn't going to be on the initial 53 and then when you found out he probably wasn't going to be brought back because we all heard Brandon Bean say, like, he, he can go ahead and he can try and find a team. If we end up being able to bring him back, that's cool, but we're not going to make that a priority right now. And I'm paraphrasing there, but yeah, yeah. No, what, was your, was, what was your thought? When he, when he first got cut, I'm not going to lie, I like texted his agent. I was like, please tell me it's a procedural move so we can bring him back. And um, I, know, I mean, it's they were still in waiting to see. That That's, that's crazy to me. Like, I, I don't know. I, I guess – I guess I'm not as high on our tight ends as any everybody else, and I know that they drafted Tommy Sweeney. He hasn't done anything for me. No. Um, I don't know if they're keeping him because they feel bad for him because of his whole medical situation. I don't know. I mean, he hasn't shown what to me that he's good. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> what a wild thing! What a wild thing! We're gonna keep you. We're gonna keep you on the 53 because we feel bad for you. Well, God, I mean, I wish you might feel bad mean, for me. Dang, I know, right? I mean, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe they messed up his medicals or something. They feel bad. I don't know. But I just don't see, like, it. he's not a great player. I, I don't – maybe I'm crazy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, can, can we please just try to find another tight end to add, like, somebody, just a- anybody that can extend the field? Yeah, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not. I, I definitely don't want people thinking I'm like this. Dawson Knox is incredible. The Bills' tight end you are. is incredible. I'm definitely yeah. not. No, let's not do that. Let's not do that. I am. Let's not do that. Hey, Casey. Casey, Casey is. That's, no, Casey, that's Kyle Casey Knox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I like. I want I like him to Dawson, be better, though. but I'm not. I'm not like in this big rush to go get somebody because I think also if you add another brand new player to the roster right now. That makes it harder for Emmanuel Sanders and Josh Allen to get up to speed. I would much rather add somebody a couple games in, four, five, six games into the season. That like give Josh Allen, Emmanuel Sanders time to get on the same page, or at least work towards that, and then add another good. player onto the roster. Like they give them pretty good. That, give them a, be a, a little bit more time. That's going to be nice. I, our wide receiver core is amazing. I, yeah. I love it. I mean. Yeah, I do. yeah. I mean, that's, there's lie. there's a reason they were they had to keep seven. It's like because every single one of those guys they kept can add something to the roster, whatever it may be, whether it's being a wide receiver or special teams or whatever. Every one of those guys forced their way onto the roster because they're just that good. Amen. Hey, we need it. We need that good players. We just need a whole yeah. bunch of them. Yeah, keep them keep them coming. Is but there is there picks, anywhere? Is there anywhere on the defense that you are a little nervous right now with the Bills roster, like as it currently stands? Because obviously things could still change. They could make a trade. They could, you know, sign somebody. I, I don't think they're going to, but like you never know. Is there what's the area that you think is the weakest? Maybe we'll even say outside linebacker. 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 Okay. Linebacker. Um, I, I like the Milano. I like I like Matt Milano. I like I like Edmonds. AJ Klein does good on run plays on fourth down. I don't know if mm-hmm. for some reason the guy shines, um, and he's made some big plays in his career. I, I mean, the other two guys, Andre Smith and Matakavich. I mean, they got Dotson too. It's they got six at oh, linebacker, Dotson. which I was surprised by. I didn't think they were going to keep six. Well, they need Dotson because the other two are not good at linebacker. So I mean, they're special teams guys, and that that's a problem for me. And to me, if you're going to have a guy that's Oh, to me, they're they're more special teams aces than they are linebackers. So I think one of them got saved because Daryl Johnson was traded, if that makes sense. So I think I think at the end of the day, linebackers a big need for me. I mean, if one of them goes down, if Matt Milano goes down, Tremaine Edmonds goes down, you're okay with what you have? You're no, okay it's, with it's, Andre Smith playing Mike? 
Oh, I'm not okay. Yeah, AJ no. and AJ Klang. Oh, we're, Casey, we're going we're gonna, uh, to make a Andre mention Smith of that. Smith is better than Tr- uh, Tremaine Edmonds. We, I see, he I doesn't call actually it as I think see it, that. Damon. <laughs> he, he doesn't actually think that, but anybody who <laughs> saw that Twitter post knows who Casey's <laughs> referring to. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to do that, Casey. <laughs> um, I have, I don't care. What's bully me? Um, Damon, I do have a question. Um, we have one spot open on our on our practice squad right now. What are are there any rumblings right now? What what's going on in your little inner circle that you have? I assume you're on like an old school, um, you know, uh, 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 what was that called, Kyle? You remember when we were like in the third grade? We had that like messaging AIM system. What's that? Aim, aim messenger. You're on aim messenger yeah. right now with all, all your all your scouting buddies. What are the rumors going on right now um, with that last practice squad spot? Well, well, most of the time, anytime that there's a last practice squad that's remaining available, the team's going to sign somebody from elsewhere, and they're flying in to get to your facility. Got to take a physical, and then they'll be announced tomorrow. So more than likely, they're going to sign somewhere, someone from elsewhere. Who that is, I don't know. If you can, I don't, I don't, I don't know my rumblings on that. The reason that they announced the 15 that they did today is because they were all on the team. So they're already probably all in town. They're probably all there. Bring them back, sign them. A couple of them this were one, at the practice today. Right, right, yeah. because they they never left. Now, there's somebody that's out there, or there's somebody that's going to go through the waivers tomorrow because there's a lot of players cut today. they got to go through waivers. You know, they, maybe they're waiting on somebody, somebody to strike there and try to hit somebody. Um, some of the players that were cut today, there was some there was some decent players. Um, Rodney Adams, the wide receiver from Chicago, who got released today. Bless Austin from the Jets was released today. I was about to say, um, bless. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's an animal. But like I told you, I am I would be shocked. I would be absolutely shocked if the Bills did that. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's got to be somebody that they're looking at elsewhere or somebody that was on the roster someplace else that they want to bring to their practice squad. Could be a veteran. They, I think they can sign six veterans on their practice squad. I don't know how many they have. Probably not many. They're all A lot of them are rookies. But being that McLeod about, was snatched, uh, I would say corner. What about Terrell Crosby? Any rumbling on where he was going to end up? I, I think he was injured, and I think that's why he was released. So if he's injured and nobody claimed him, which nobody did, he'll probably revert yeah. back to the injured reserve. And if that's the case, then the, then the Lions would basically get to keep him. And uh, yeah. he would be a nice one. But, you know, like I'll give you an example. Today, Andre Chachere was cut from the Colts. Now you're probably like, who in the hell? Andre Chachere made the 53, initial 53 for the Colts. He's a corner. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if the Bills take a gander at that kid. I don't think he'll be on the 53, but I, I wouldn't be shocked. If, the Colts are going to want him back, but he, he's a baller. He's a baller. And 6'2 corner, really good corner. I, I wouldn't be shocked if the Bills at least look there. I mean, I would if I'm there. I don't think they're going to go bless Austin. I, I would, what, about, what about defensive much, tackle Marvin Wilson? He signed with the Philadelphia Did he Eagles sign? Okay, I, I missed that then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Da, na, na. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. He was, he was, <laughs> anyway, another one. He, he, he was too he was too good. Um he 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 shouldn't have come back to school. Um he should have just went ahead and, and, and went out. Um instead of coming back to school. I appreciate the season that he put up for Florida State, but he should have he should have went on went to the draft. Um I have another practice one. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't. Yeah. Sure. Right. So no, I'm keep, we'll keep it with the practice squad. The Bills, I'm, I'm just going to read this off real quick, who they have on the practice squad as of right now while we're recording. Obviously, when you're listening, probably going to be a little bit different at that point. They'll probably have another guy. Jack Anderson, Cam Lewis, Mike Love, Quentin Morris, Josh Thomas, Brandon Bryant, Jamil Douglas, Jake Fromm, Tanner Gentry, Davis Webb, Rashad Wild Goose, Joe Giles Harris. I hope I said that right. Antonio Williams, Isaiah Hodgins. <laughs> And Elijah Griffin. That's that's who is on the practice squad right now. If you had to take a guess, because the same rules are applied as last year, where you can <coughs> players up to the active fifty three back down. I think you have a certain number of times you could do that, so on and so forth. Which guys on that list? Which guys from the Bills practice squad do you think have the potential to not just get pulled up and be like a 
what if guy on on game day, but like could potentially get pulled up because of injury and actually have to play and be okay. Joe Giles Harris will be a protected player because they're. I know they have six players on the roster, but I just he has so much special teams experience and mm-hmm. and starting experience to actually play the actual linebacker position. I think he becomes a, a necessity. It, it, on the practice squad, and I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, because there's there are better players out there, but he would definitely be somebody that I think that would be more protected. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if Jack Anderson, because I think we only have three guards right now currently on our active roster. So being that Anderson's there and he was a draft pick, they'll probably want to try to keep a special eye on him. Being, I mean, depth wise, I don't know if I'm if I read that right. I think there was only three active guards, and then minus Ryan Bates, um, right? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think there's three, and obviously Gate uh, Bates can play both. But um, you know, I I would say, in my opinion, I would say Anderson would be protected, and then corner. I would say Cam yeah. Lewis would probably be. Yeah, that would probably be the three that I would go with. If you know what I mean, just random me thinking about it top of the yeah, head, you yeah. know, if, if I'm looking at it from that standpoint. Do you find it weird at all that they kept both from <laughs> and Davis Webb on the practice squad? Because that was no. something that I thought was a little odd personally, but I, I might be looking at it the wrong way. No, because what they'll probably end up doing is splitting them the same way they did last year and having one kind of in quarantine in case anything happens. Because if that quarterback room goes down, See, the practice squad quarterback, when he comes up, he can throw to all the wide receivers and everything. Jake Fromm, move him again. Or maybe you allow Jake Fromm to be in there and put Davis Webb out by himself because I did that to Fromm already once. Mm-hmm. The whole point is separating them, making sure that – I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we're not a fully vaccinated team. We're not the Atlanta yeah. Falcons. We're not reporting 100%, and there's a lot of people on our team that don't want the vaccine. So with that being said, you know, if the quarterback room does get hit, which – it's a possibility could happen. All right. Then who would be your quarterback? And at that point, I think by keeping both of them there, separate from, he's still getting paid a paycheck, but separate him. And if you separate him, you have a quarterback, no matter what, you're not playing Kendall Hill hitting freaking the wide receiver playing quarterback. Yeah, you get yeah. what I'm saying? So to me, it's a smart move. Will a team snag one off of the practice squad potentially? Yeah, it could happen. But it also gives you that option, and I think I think the Bills would be dumb not to do that. Yeah, I, I def I guess I wasn't looking at it that way. <laughs> I was hoping that they wouldn't have to, but it, I mean, it makes complete sense with the the team's vaccination status, with the way the like, like the rules are right now. You got to factor that, and so hopefully they that's, do end that's up taking definitely, something like that. But that's a sign. If you're keeping four quarterbacks total. That there's a sign there that you should be paying attention to what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah. All right, you get it, Casey, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That Casey's like, no. who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I'm, I'm, just I'm so this this the world off season cares. has, and I get it, I know, and it sounds insensitive, but this off season has just been so dumb when it comes to the COVID stuff. Uh, I I have personally came out and said, hey, if my employer tells me to go, you know, get vaccinated, I guess I'm going to get vaccinated because they pay my bills. You know what I'm saying? And I, I have a two-month-old, so I, I didn't want to get vaccinated right away. You know, I wanted to wait a little bit, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then guess what? You'll you'll never believe this. My job came out and said it very, 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 very um, um, within the laws and basically said, hey, if you don't go get vaccinated – you might as well just go look for a different job, right? Uh, and I looked at my wife and I said, well, I guess I got to go get vaccinated now, right? And it had nothing to do with me not wanting to get the vaccination. It was more of, I want to wait. I want to just chill out, wait. I work from home. I don't ever leave. I mask up when I go, blah, blah, blah. The only thing that hurt me when I got my vaccination was my feelings because somebody made me do it. That's the only <laughs> thing that hurt, right? And I've got I've got my second shot on Sunday, so... Super excited, I guess. I was making fun of my wife because she's not vaccinated yet. And I was like, huh, wow, wow, that's HIPAA, look Casey. Hip, HIPAA. Look at you. I know, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so over it. If, if your job's telling you to get vaccinated for, for reasons, hey, let's just get vaccinated and move on with it. That's, that's my point. 
Well, you know, I, I just like to stir the pot with people. So I'm always I know. Trying, talking trash. I do it all the time. And I, and I just, I don't know. I mean, the NFL rules are really ridiculous. I mean, yeah. when it comes to that. I mean, they're <laughs> like. Urban Meyer? I mean, yeah, he just straight out came out. He was like, look, bro, if you got, you're not vaccinated, we, have, we definitely played a part. We cut your behind because of it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's happening around the league. I mean, listen, it's you don't want to lose. Yeah. This yeah. is a league where everything's performance. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it's performance. You don't want to lose. You don't want, like Cam Newton. Let's be real. Cam Newton was released because he did not have a COVID vaccine. Period. There's n- there's nothing that you can say on that beyond. What happened was he would co- go from practices after practices. He would go out to the community. Cam's always in the community doing things. He would go out and do his thing. He's around people. People complain, say, hey, look, he was out there and that guy over there had COVID. He ends up having to go on a five-day hiatus from it. Boom. Mac Jones takes his job. So I think they're holding people accountable for their actions because you're putting the team in a bad situation. And, I mean, the decision was made. I mean, they're going to say it was made on performance, but we all know damn well that them five days off, and they wouldn't say why, right? They just came out and said that it was a five-day because he didn't understand the policies of COVID. That you're basically calling him a, a dumbass, right? That's what you're doing. So at the end of the day, I mean – Players are getting cut left and right because of it. And the Bills are happy with their 53. I'm happy with their 53. I'll tell you, my favorite player on their practice squad is Brandon Bryant. Um, I've yes. known Brandon yes. for years. You were, about him. you were talking about him a couple weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. love that kid. Yeah. Love that kid. I saw your you, – you tweeted out that he made the practice squad. I was very excited about it. The kid just flashes. He, he just flashes. So when – I don't know. When people were talking about Bam Johnson, blah, 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 it's like, hey, there's always the next man up mentality for me, right? And I understand that we have so many on the defensive line now, which is such an awesome thing to have. But you turn around, you look at kids like Bryant, and you're like, this kid can be something, right? Um, So I don't know. I love him. I love that he's on the practice squad. I'm very, very, very excited for him. Yeah, he's a good kid. And I'll tell you, it's like Justin Zimmer. Justin Zimmer came on right when you needed him. And boom, look at him now. Now he's like a mainstay in Buffalo. Like they loved him. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, that kid was such a freak back in college, man. I'm telling you, I'll never forget the videos he would send me benching 500 pounds like it was nothing. Ah, God. Like, man, I love Justin Zimmer. That's my hero. I but, um, that. No big deal. Yeah, me too. And so I, I want to do but, I want to do a little bit of around the league stuff because let's, let's go. You, you do have more insight into what's going on with other teams than we will. Um, and we don't have to spend too much time on this because obviously it, it is a bill show. But like, what were some of the more surprising? I know it's it's a shock that it's a bill show. Um, but what were some of the more surprising cuts? I mean, obviously that the Cam News kind of like shook a lot of people. But outside of that one, were there any other cuts that you looked at and you were like, "Damn, didn't expect that one." Well, you think about this. There was 257 draft picks in the draft last year. Out of the 257, 26 draft picks were released that's a that's a lot that's damn near a whole round of Mm -hmm. draft picks were cut so when you think about the value of that you're drafting players you're hoping that so many players are going to make your 53-man roster you're hoping that these draft picks are going to churn out for you and then the highest draft pick was pick 109 des fitzpatrick gets cut i mean they traded up i mean tennessee traded up to get this kid and he got outperformed by three undrafted guys you know what i mean so it's kind of that's heartbreaking news. I think when you look at around the league, I think Des Fitzpatrick mm-hmm. getting cut was definitely a shock because they did trade up for him. They gave up three draft picks to cut a kid. That's crazy to me. Like that's just bad scouting. Someone should lose their job. But um, you know, we're not we're not in the job of losing. Sorry. Um, Someone he technically job. did. Oh, did he? <laughs> well, no, it, it was Des Fitzpatrick, oh. but. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, but no, he's back. He got a practice squad job, so okay. he's good. All right, good for so, him. I mean, he's still he's still going to be making his money. But at the end of the day, I mean, the, the, he was a big time cut. Twenty six draft picks. I mean, um, the the Vikings cut a couple good players that were, I mean, shocks to me. Mm-hmm. Dakota Do- Dakota Dozier was is out there right now. He's a free agent. He would be an amazing guy to sign on the practice squad. You're talking an offensive guard with starting tech caliber opportunities. 
He's been in the league. He's a vested veteran. You could throw him on the practice squad, groom him. He's nasty. He actually played for the, in the East West Shrine game for me. Um, he was a surprise cut for me. I was really shocked by him. Shocked by um, who else was there? Yesterday, the um, listen to this one. Uh, today, Royce Freeman was released, the running back for the Broncos. Oh. That might be a sneaky good one to keep an eye on because the situation with our running backs. Yeah, we like we got Breida, Moss, blah blah blah. Royce Freeman's a pretty damn good running back that we could probably, you know, if that's some place that comes available, you may have to claim him. Somebody mm-hmm. will probably claim him. But availability-wise, he'd be there. The, Dr- the Detroit Lions, they should claim him, like, tomorrow. They should, if they were smart. Um, he would be a good fit over there. But, I mean, just around the league, just looking, there was a lot of players, obviously, that lost their job this weekend. I think – Dakota Dozier would be a great addition to any team. I think to me, I've scouted him since he was at, in college. He was probably one of the nastiest offensive linemen um, to come out. And I, I think to me personally, that was more of a shock than Cam Newton because he he was a starter. I mean, he was a starter for the Jets for many years too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would I would like to see that kid on the practice squad if we could if we could pull that off. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. know where it goes, but I would love to. If we added him, it, it's, my it's interior chance, guard right? position would feel better. Yeah, I'd feel better about my interior guard, though. Yeah, I mean, those, those are the types of players that you just take a chance on it. If it, if the guy works out, awesome. If he doesn't, take a chance on another guy. I mean, that's partially what the practice squad is. Obviously, that's not like the full purpose of it, but partially is just like, let's see what they could do in practice. Can they hold their own? Let, if they can, maybe we keep them around a little longer. Well, I mean, just look. I mean, Justin Zimmer. Justin yeah. Zimmer was a practice squad guy. I mean, th- a lot of our players end up being practice squad guys. I think Terrell Dodson was on their practice squad too, and he mm-hmm. got called up and ended yeah, up he making was, he was up and down three. last year. Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the Bills one of Bills Mafia's favorite running backs of all time, Fred Jackson. He was a practice squad guy for what two years, I think, before yeah. he actually got his chance. So, just because a guy's on the practice squad for a year or two doesn't mean he's not worth still taking a look at. Absolutely. Who would you guys want in the last practice squad spot? Give me your guy from around the league. Come on now. Tap I, into it. Honestly, uh, I, I, I think, don't I don't know. I'm gonna have to take a look at this real quick. Casey, I think come on, Crosby baby. was mine. Crosby Who? was mine. That's why I want, Crosby, right? I want you to I want you to I want you I want you to look into it, start texting around, see if you get them uh see if you get any whispers about it. That was the only guy that I was looking at. Uh and it was the same reason Nap said, you know, getting that veteran status at the swing tackle, blah, blah, blah. He's an upgrade, all that good stuff. Stash him on the practice squad. If you need him, he's there. If you don't, he's not, blah, blah, blah. But I think at the end of the day, they're not going to sign anybody from around the league. Um, I think what happens is is when Stevenson comes back um, from injury, they move whoever they, they wave, whoever they wave is going to go and revert to the practice squad. And I think they just keep that whole – thing intact so that's my thoughts on it so you think they're just gonna ride with an f- empty spot on the roster that, I mean, yeah that they're definitely not happening. gonna do that, <laughs> that <ain't happening. laughs> they're definitely not gonna do that <laughs> also, I, yeah, i'm not gonna, i'm not gonna just bs my way through this and act like i know a player that i would want them to pick up that would be disingenuous of me i want them to pick up another corner though i would love for them to just take another chance on a corner and just see what they can do because what I mean, we talked about it earlier cb2 i don't expect them to like put big money into it ever but if you just keep taking a chance on another guy, taking a chance on another guy, eventually you might get one who sticks on the roster that you really like. So I would love for them to go try and pick up another corner just to put them on the practice squad and see what, what happens. That, I think that's where I would probably go for it because they already have the, the linemen. I wouldn't hate picking up a guard or a tackle to be on the practice squad also outside of the guys they already have. But if I had to really like pick a guy, I'd probably look through the corners and see what they can get there. Just to just take a chance. Okay, take a chance. I'm not mad at you. I would hope yeah, not. Me, me too. Me too. I'll be a water boy. But uh, no, I mean, I, I think that's a good question. A week. What's that? The practice squad makes nine grand a week. Yeah, that's it. That's absolutely stupid money. I wish I made nine grand a week. You can be a practice squad guy. <laughs> What, like why? Yeah. Why wouldn't you oh, just okay. go do that? My, yeah. my knees are not next week. Tomorrow, next so. week on OnlyFans.com. <laughs> Casey live. Man, Nine grand I, a week. I've thought about. 
I've, I've thought about I've thought about shaving my toes and making an OnlyFans and just like stepping oh, in food because okay. people this would is, do it, right? Dude, man, I, I, I don't know what it was. was. Casey, all I seen was dollar have, bills. No, no, no. I I have a gripe with you, Casey. Uh oh, what did I do this time? You, have you, to just, be way more you just mentioned it when you said shaving, and you put out I'm a not tweet shaving the other my beard. Day. You put out I a tweet did, the other right. day. I did. So and you said if you got a hundred uh, likes, you would shave yep. your beard. When are we doing that on the yep. show? So it's so funny. Um, the bet was <laughs> Steve Judge Mathis said, um, Casey, if you know Jake Kumro makes the roster, right? Um, you have to say something that I that I tell you to say with you know no explanation. I was like, all right, cool. And if Jake Kumro did not make the roster, he would have to do something that I said with no explanation, right? Um, Steve, his main goal in life is to make me look like a jackass, right? So what he did was he thought about it. He thought long and hard about it. And he said, what is one thing that Casey would never do? And that's shave his beard. So what should I make him say on Twitter that he would shave his beard? So Steve made me put out there that I would shave my beard for 100 likes, right? It's like, okay, I'll put it out it there. Five minutes, my beard. By the way. It took like five it took minutes five, for it, him to get there. Yeah. My my wife liked it and retweeted it. You have to do Ooh. it now. She she I'm liked not, and retweeted it. She was that's, she's all in on that's it. That's the thing. Look, it's so funny. Like, even talking to my wife, like when I was in the army and I was clean cut and all this other stuff, she knew this day was coming. Like it, she's seen my family, she's been around it, and I've told her, like, hey, when I get out of the army, I'm gonna have long hair and I'm gonna have a beard. She was like, Well, I don't know. I was like, No, it's gonna happen. Like, that's the one thing that I want in my life, right? It was like a uh, it was like a coming to <laughs> It was like coming to manhood, right? Like that was the thing in my family is to have a beard, right? And um, anyway, she knows about it. Like she, she, she will complain about the beard, but she knows for a fact that I'm not shaving it for her, right? She won't even ask me to, but she will look at me and be like, "I don't like it. It's too long. I don't like it." I'm so, like, "Well, that's too bad." So we can officially say Casey Reed, not a man of his word. Sure. I mean, what, whatever makes you sleep at night. At the end of the day, Steve <laughs> won. Steve made me look like a jackass, and I will continue to look like a jackass. So, congrats on uh, Judge Mathis for coming out there and uh, making me look like a jackass. You win, you win, Steve. Congrats. Yeah, good job, Steve. He oh, I did on. have. He doesn't listen. I to did this have show. another Bills. I did have another Bills question, Damon. Okay, okay. I was gonna, I was gonna dog Steve for. We can, we can do that like first. That. Then. Let's, let's do that first. Then. Yeah, 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 dog Steve. Come on, yeah. Steve. Look, man, don't don't be coming at my man Casey anymore, or it's or it's. It's on site if you Ooh. keep messing with my on boy. Site. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> on there site. we go. <laughs> hey, on site. Green light. Green light. You mess yeah. with my boy, Casey. <laughs> Casey Man, that boy fights. Himself. Damon's going to defend him for him. Yeah, he fights yeah. lions, bro. Ah, well, 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 come on. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's, a, it's a tiger. I would not be caught dead trying to come out of lion. Those things are king of the no, jungle. But no, no, no. But you are the king of the jungle. The bump a tiger, that ain't nothing. That ain't even in your class. We're going with lions. We're crazy, um, bro. Yeah. But, okay, but Judge, that's, that's my guy. He's good. Just leave Casey alone. Pick on naps. All right? Go ahead. No, fine. Yeah, go ahead. Pick on me. That's okay. <laughs> I, I can live with that. Um, I did have – so this is actually kind of picking on Casey a little bit here with this question. But Saran Neal, Casey hates him. Um, he, he wanted him everybody. Cut. I do, yeah. Yeah. I do not hate him. him. I do not hate him. I do not hate him. He is just You're right. I might have corner. framed that a little poorly. He he is just not an outside corner, right? In fact, I liked what they were doing in the last preseason game with Saran Neal. We actually haven't been able to talk about this. Um, were we able to talk about this? I don't know. But the last preseason game, how they were playing Saran Neal, kind of in that um, hybrid role, um, safety linebacker position when he was up close to the, to the line of scrimmage. I actually like that role for him if he is to see the field, right? Like, if you want Saran Neal on the field, I like him doing that because he was all over the, the field. He was making tackles. It was great. Having him as an outside corner, it's a big no-no for me. Like, absolutely not. Well, if that's where they were going to put college, him. wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, so that yes, I mean, it makes yeah. sense. What my question was going to be, like, how should we look at Saran Neal and evaluate him? Because clearly he's not supposed to be a guy who he's going to be a starting or even should be a backup outside corner. And some people might even want him cut from the roster. <clears throat> Casey. But I did. Yep. 
like how should we because the bills clearly value him he has special teams value like we talked about earlier but like how should we evaluate a player like that who we're just not going to see on the field all that often well they're going to groom him into being your nickel so you better enjoy him yeah, I mean, so he's gonna, Casey. he's going to be he's going to be in the inside i mean it, he i think right now he's nickel too and we haven't seen Taron johnson i mean he's going to play this is his final year I don't think Johnson, I mean, he might get franchised, but are you really going to franchise him? He might be the best player to franchise for your team next year. That's a lot of money to pay a nickel. I wouldn't but franchise I mean, him, yeah. Well, I mean, then you're going to have to sign him to a deal or let him walk, and if that's the case, then get ready for Saran Neal. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't know how long Saran here. So Saran's got to be a free agent coming up too. I think they were I mean, drafted the same year. Yeah, they got to come were, about yeah. the same time. So if that's the case and they're both possibly gone, Special teams wise, Saran Neal's he's one of the best special teams players in the in the in the NFL. Whether you like it or not, look at our special teams. He's the first one down the field. He's the first one making a play. I'm damn near every everything he's in there. Thirty three's in there. So I mean, he's a small school kid. He's a Jackson Jacksonville State kid for me. I've, I've watched him. They did play him in a hybrid role at Jacksonville State, where they play him at the safety, bring him down nickel. He didn't really play nickel or corner. Um, more covering tight ends. More you know, slots, hitting people. He loved to hit people. Um, but he's a playmaker and he's always around the ball. And I think mm-hmm. the thing about him is he's the type of kid that's going to bring his lunch pail and just do what he what he's asked to do. And I think at the end of the day, like I said, our corners, that's where you're at right now. You're at with at all of our corners are people that they can groom into what mm-hmm. they want. My dog is not happy with y'all right now. <laughs> He's telling me. I thought it was Milo. No, no, Milo's Milo's not in the apartment right now. He's uh he's at the fiance's apartment. So not making noise right now. Yeah, he, he's like crying. He's like looking at me like, come on, dad, get off of that thing. <laughs> Tell that t- I, I like, that tiger I, tamer. I did I did like Neil in the in the hybrid or the star position, whatever whatever you want to call that position. I liked him in that position. I thought he played fantastic. And and but I that's even, his I natural position. Yeah, That's exactly. His natural Why are, and, when I, and of course, I get it. You're playing him on the outside corner because there were some injuries during the preseason at corner, so you you kind of slot him there. But like, thank thank goodness that is not their talk track of like, hey, we're going to put him on the outside. That's where we want him. No, absolutely not. He needs to be in that that role. So, um, no, he, he played pretty decent. And I'm actually, you know, after watching him play that game, I I came around. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take an L for this because I had him off my 53. But he is playing like his. You know his jobs online, which it might have been. Who knows? But you know, I, I will give is, you so. some credit too. You had him off your fifty three because you wanted McLeod on the fifty three too. So like that was it was the trade off you made. But you can make a career being a special teamer. Look at Matthew yeah. Slater for the Patriots. Later, he has a job in the NFL because of how good he is on special teams. So you well, can definitely think like, of you this. Can make a career out of that, dude. The Houston Texans cut Kiki Kute right and kept Andre Roberts. They have five wide receivers, and one of them is Andre Roberts. That's all they have. Yeah. The Texans right now have five wideouts, and one of them is Andre Roberts. We were upset when Andre Roberts was our wide receiver on the field. We're going, why the hell is he out there, right? And we're getting the ball on the sidelines. Why are we throwing it to the kid? He's their fifth wideout. Especially and we're complaining matters. about Kumaro. <laughs> Casey's I'll trying to hold his tongue. I'll stay mad at him, bro. I'll, All right, well, let's, no, let's it, finish. It starts skipping, so it is what it is. Let's let's finish this up. I'm going to put you on the spot, Damon. Give me a. I'll do. We'll do two things: a record prediction for the Bills. I guess technically three things: a record prediction, your expectation for how like how the season is going to end for the Bills, and then give me just a random prediction for a player on the team. Oh man! All right. You really guys, on the spot. Guys, that was a lot. All right, you guys, you guys are gonna hate me. Um, so the first one is record prediction, right? Yep, record prediction. I would never. Nine I would wins. never hate you. What? Nine wins. Okay, well you're, no. well, you're pushing it. You're no. pushing it. Yeah, injuries strike heavily this year. Um, oh, I feel like we digressed. Oh, I know, Bills fans. Listen, man. Oh, no, I'm so listen. sorry for asking the question. Hey, hold on. I'm just I'm giving you an honest answer. We still make the wild card, but what? nine wins. What? Why are yeah, you we're pretending to be a Bills fan? So I'm just I'm just 
Second, I mean, second biggest content person to pretend to be a Bills fan. <laughs> uh, second biggest. <laughs> so, what was the second question? Uh, expectation for how the season ends. We lose. Disappointed. Yeah. In the first round of the playoffs. Oh my goodness! You are. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Unfortunately, unfortunately, our offensive line is suspect. I believe in that, and I know that they tried to do it, and I think that. Our quarterback goes down, unfortunately. Oh, damn it. No, no. Yeah, I don't want I, this tied to the show. I, listen, listen. I, mean, you can, <laughs> I you don't can want this tied to the show. You can, you can cut it we early. We don't cut I, anything. <laughs> we don't. We this don't cut rough. anything. Hey, listen. I'm rough. just – you guys are asking me my opinion. Yep. I hope it doesn't happen. I, I think that we have the talent to win the entire damn thing. But I, for some reason, for, in my gut, I feel like we're going to digress this year. And then oh, the last is, thing you guys said was prediction. give you a prediction. Prediction for a player, yep. AJ Esp- Epinesa has 10-plus sacks. I would love that. I, th- I think everybody in Bill's Mafia would love that. If, it, if Epinesa can get to that double digit, he had – I mean, it seems like from what he – I mean, just from that one play, even against Chicago, it seems like he's – kind of gotten to that body type that they want him in, that he's comfortable in with the athletic ability that he's comfortable with. So it seems like he's might be ready to take that jump. And, and I'm like gonna, I will say this. I will say this too, because I know the Bills Mafia is going to murder me, but they've been murdering me all freaking year too. So I'm just going to take it. Like I'm taking the L with Casey, but I'll say this. <laughs> that was a ring shot. One, <laughs> that was a direct shot. Stay, hey, if we can stay healthy the entire year, We'll, we'll contend for Super Bowl. No question. We will be against the Chiefs in the big dance to, to go to the Super Bowl. I, mm-hmm. I believe that 100%. But like I'm telling you, I have this bad feeling. I've been having it all year, and I don't go away from my feelings. I don't put that out there. I'm not, you know, I have you don't see I mean, it's out there now. <laughs> oh, it's out there now. <laughs> It's out there now. Yeah, it's out there. It's, a hell it's, it's out but there you, now. You put me on the spot. You put me on the spot. That's what you get. But um, God, I, you know what? I'm re- I regret that. And I think it's a high ankle sprain. Oh, so let's no. <laughs> we gotta stop. We gotta end the show. No, let's end the show on a high All note. Right, can, no we, bills. can we end the show on a high note? <laughs> yeah, I'll end the, I'm gonna end. I'll end it on a high note. Yes, Devin please. Singletary. Devin Singletary hits a thousand yards rushing. That would be huge. I would. I don't expect Actually, that, but I would. I, that would be huge. The way he's been running once, this preseason once, has been. Awesome. Once Josh Allen goes down, they have to start running the ball. You, this is not a high note. <laughs> you are. You I, are playing. I, 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 look, look, hey, look, I am messing with you guys. I really. I don't wish injuries on people. No, I know it's not wishing them. Yeah. No, no, I'm not doing that by any means. I, I, I really. You guys put me on the spot, and everybody's going to sit there and give you a high note thing. That's what everyone wants to do because they're Bills fans. But there are some realistic things that happen. Our offensive line is not that good. And at the end of the day, you know, if it, it takes one player to roll up into you, or you trying to get away, and he does, he's a, he's a pretty savvy guy trying to get away from people. And Mitch Trubisky's any quarterback, and I, I, I mean, I am on record. Saying that Mitch Trubisky is the is one of the ten most important players for the Bills this year for that reason alone. I got killed. I got killed for saying that, but I truly believe that Trubisky is one of the ten most important players. He is number ten, but he's on that list for me because if that situation that we don't want to happen, nobody wants that to happen. But if there is an injury and Trubisky has to go in. I believe in him a hell of a lot more than any of the other backup quarterbacks that the Bills have had. So I, I think he could get them more than nine wins personally, but that's we, we could end up going on and on and on on this discussion. I think we got to probably cut it off there because we we definitely have the tendency to just go really long on our shows, and we actually have talked about it recently. <laughs> Let's try and cut our show length down a little bit. We cut it down 15 minutes today. How's that, Casey? It's not good enough, but I was on. you'll never be good enough. You'll never be good enough. Uh, yeah. um, I'll never be good enough. All right. Well, then <laughs> let's close it out there. Um, Damon, let me get a Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. He ain't. He don't go even want to say it. He's so, he's so mad. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he, he's upset. All right. Go Bills. Go Bills.